Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Chucky2009 and today we're going to be talking about overhead stick welding. I'm going to be giving you all some tips that I've picked up and uh, that will hopefully make your lives a lot easier if you're about to attempt this at school or out in your garage or whatever. So alright, first off, overhead stick welding. Fun times, fun times. Um, this is a highly requested video, pretty much everybody in their brother-in-law wants to watch it, I guess. I don't really know, I bet someone will watch it. And so that's why I'm putting it together. Now, first off, before we dive headfirst into this, let's cover some frequently asked questions. Uh, number one, stretch. I'm, uh, I'm newer to welding, or at least I'm newer to stick welding, and I don't have all that much out of position experience. So, in a nutshell, is this gonna suck? Answer, yes. You're gonna have molten crap raining down on you. You have to get used to welding in, a, in an entirely different position, and there's a heck of a learning curve involved in that, but you know, it's honestly not that bad. You'll get the hang of it, you'll get past the learning curve, and hopefully this video is going to help you guys but, out. You know, honestly, like I said, once you get the hang of it, it's really not that hard. I might destroy a $500 camera tonight, but it's not that hard. Alright, first off, let's uh, discuss the tricks of the trade, or tips of the trade, or whatever it is. Alright, first off, you're going to want to wear a lot of safety gear. There are plenty of times when it's perfectly acceptable to weld in like a long sleeve shirt. Y'all usually see me wearing like a denim shirt or a canvas shirt aka the Canadian tuxedo. Uh, I think that's out of a movie, I don't really know. But anyway, this is not one of those times. I have donned the great man apron of welding. It's not really all that necessary for this, but I'm wearing it anyway quite frankly, because I can. But what you're definitely going to want to wear are some leather sleeves. Why, you ask? Because if you're just holding the old Stinger lead up in there and your denim shirt or long sleeve t-shirt or whatever, you're going to get a nice ball of spatter that's going to land here, a ball of slag, whatever, it's going to roll down your arm and into your elbow, and it's going to be really painful. How do I know? Because I've done it. In fact, the last time I did any overhead stick welding for any length of time was Oh shoot, I don't know, probably about two months ago. And I still have a couple nice burns on. Actually, it's my other elbow. Yeah, because I hold it, you know, like this. But anyway, wear leathers or you'll hurt yourself badly. Also, a good helmet's going to help you out, as always. And another thing to keep in mind is I have at least tried or someone experimented with a lot of different types of welding. Everything from, you know, 6G pipe to spray arc MIG. And I have never ever come across anything that destroys clear lenses half as fast as running 6010 overhead. So if you have two helmets and one of them takes standard clear lenses that you can buy for a dollar a piece and the other one takes more expensive proprietary lenses, now would be a half decent time to wear the, uh, the cheaper to replace the clear lenses on hood. Alright, now that that's out of the way, let's discuss the actual welding itself that we're going to be doing. This is just a random welding joint that I found in the old garage here. And the first tip I'm going to give you all is to watch your work angle. If I was going to be welding this in flat position like I probably did, I don't know, it's, I found this in the scrap pile, but whatever the case, I would probably run about a 45 degree work angle, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, just depending. But the problem is that gravity is going to be working for or against you depending on how you do this overhead thing. So if I were to weld this overhead at a 45 degree angle, the arc would be shoving metal up this a ways and gravity would be pulling it out this a ways and I'd have undercut along the top plate and it would be a bad time. I'm sure there's a way to do it, but if you, but your puddle's gonna sag, so if you compensate for that in your work angle to kind of shove it up there on the top plate, your life's gonna be a lot easier and I highly recommend doing that. Next thing, don't make overhead welding harder than it needs to be. This is overhead. Stick welding, of course. It is clearly over my head, and if I drop it, I'll probably die. But, to be fair, this is also overhead stick welding. This is going to be a lot easier for me to do. If you're in like a school type setting, definitely keep that in mind. Uh, what else do I want to mention? Oh yeah, I usually don't run a steep of a drag angle. Again, because if I were angled kind of like this, I would be shooting metal up into the top plate and to an extent it's just going to curl back down because of the force of gravity. So, much like with the work angle, you'll want to run a little bit closer to straight up than you usually do. Another thing to keep in mind is uh, always wear gloves. Yeah, welder's off. Alright, this is a half decent time to take your lead and wrap it once around your arm. What this will do is it takes most of the weight off of your hand and off of your wrist. If you have that weight there, it's going to be a lot, it's going to be a lot harder for you to hold up. You'll be a little shakier. And uh, 
that will obviously be not good. So all right, now that we've covered this, let's go fire up the welder and you guys will get to watch me probably burn myself. So now that we covered that and I am dressed up like the Michelin Man preparing for a crash test, there's just one other thing I want to throw in before we fire up the good old precision TIG here. And that is that, as you know, heat rises. Now this is a little bit on the bad side because your workpiece is going to heat up a little bit quicker than it will flat or horizontal. But it's also for the good because not only does heat rise, smoke also rises. So you shouldn't have that big plume of smoke going right up underneath your helmet like you would flat or horizontal. So, alright, because heat rises, like I just said, I'm going to set the amp slightly lower than I would in other positions. And to start off, we're going to be running some of this Lincoln 5P6010 8th inch diameter, and I think I'm going to start off around 85 amps or so. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, you know, 6010 might not be the easiest electrode in the world to run, but the cool thing about it is, is it's what's known as a fast freeze electrode. Uh, that puddle does not stay liquid for very long. It's small, it's less fluid than other electrodes. And for that reason, it's a little bit easier to control once you get the hang of it. And for that reason, that's how I would want to start off welding overhead if I'd never welded overhead before. So let's get a joint tacked up and we'll go from there. trying to shoot a YouTube video here. Well, all right, that's bound that happens to everybody, whether they want to admit it or not. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just uh, clean the slag immediately around the restart. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to strike the arc slightly ahead of the crater, then long arc back, trace the crater, and uh, get back to going. Now what this is going to do is it is going to eliminate that massive blob you get sometimes when you do a restart. And then, uh, well, I guess that's pretty much it. Aha! I think I got it. <laughs> I want to show you guys something. Alright, so I did some slag chipping, and this is a finished weld. Now what I want to show y'all is this up here. Now as opposed to properly filling in the crater like I, I was supposed to, I didn't. I want to show you guys how deeply that puddle is penetrating into the plate. And so I stopped like, you know, technically mid-weld. That's not, that's not what a proper end is supposed to look like. But you can see, I mean, we're digging like halfway into this plate. I mean, that's, uh, <laughs> that's really down there. And such is overhead stick welding with 6010. Now, you know, 6010 gets a lot of penetration in the first place. Then you got to figure with the heat traveling upwards, it's like running a higher amperage than you actually are. And, uh, you know, a bunch of stars line up in a row and you end up with a lot of penetration when you run 6010 overhead. Uh, but now, let's, let's try some 7018. 7018, as you know, it's not a fast freeze electrode such as 6010 here, and that means that the puddle is going to be a little bit more liquid, and the slag is going to be a lot more liquid, which means it's also going to be moderately harder for us to run out of position. And uh, because of that, I'll 
put it in the video anyway. Yeah. All right. So, uh, you know, one thing to keep in mind is you're going to want to run a shorter arc than you usually do running 7018 overhead. This is something I've learned because if you don't, you've got your electrode up in there and it looks like, you know, if you've ever played airsoft, those orange BBs you get, that's what it looks like. They just fly off the end of the electrode and drop down. What's happening is the arc is pulling them off the electrode, so to speak, and they start to travel upwards towards the puddle. Then gravity gets a hold of them because they they can't make that distance. Gravity gets a hold of them and down they go. And they really hurt if you're not wearing all your leathers. So you're definitely going to want to run a shorter arc length so those BBs aren't going to have to shoot as far. And uh, because of that they won't fall out and land on the floor. So. See some 7018. I'm gonna be running some 8th inch Hobart electrodes at 110 amps, how about? Alright, let's start there. So here's the finished weld, YouTube. Uh, basically, you know, you can see where I start off here. There's that initial small glob, and then we're just welding along, welding along, welding along, welding along. This, this nice spot of nasty undercut here, is where I begin my long arcing process. Now it's just kind of comparatively quite messy looking. We got plenty of undercut. They still got some slag up in here, actually. And then uh, undercut, 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 this is where I try to fix it, the bead goes up and it takes until here for the undercut to stop and then the rest is just uh, pretty much the same as the beginning. So I guess this completes our overhead stick welding extravaganza and I hope this video has helped you all out. It was actually pretty fun to make, like I said, overhead stick welding, not really my uh, favorite process and thing to do in the world, but it's honestly not that bad. It does have a bit of a learning curve, but who knows, you know, maybe you'll just be freakishly good at it. In fact, true story, one of the guys I go to school with uh, runs better 7018 fillets in the overhead position than he does flat. Nobody can figure it out, he doesn't have a clue. And uh, the rest of the class found that somewhat infuriating when we started doing overhead, but uh, yeah, I was happy for the guy. But anyway, you know, welding is more mental than anything else. If you tell yourself you can do it, you grab yourself a handful of electrodes and some scrap metal, you'll be doing it in no time. So, uh, you know, like I said, I hope this video helps you out. And as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more. 